Hi, my name is David Royce. I'm with Active Environmental, and I'm here at Silicon Slopes Live, and we're hoping to build the next pest control unicorn. Today we're lucky to have the chance to sit down with Aptiv's co-founders David Royce, Aptiv's chairman, and Bess Pearson, Aptiv's CEO. I got my start in pest control back in college. Uh, I would go out in the summer times and sell, and uh, it was just a way to pay for school. And I, I think I knocked about 60,000 doors over the course of four summers, so I had a lot of time to think about how antiquated our industry truly was. And uh, at the same time, during the school year, I was taking business classes. And the stuff I was hearing in school, I kept thinking, what if this could actually be applied to pest control? And that was really it. It was, what if we could take a white-collar approach to a blue-collar industry, you know, and could that be a competitive advantage? Vess, um, 2018 was a big year uh, for y'all. 59% revenue growth and $137 million in revenue after just three years. Um, how did you pull that off? Our secret sauce is number one, we, we recruit the right person. Not everyone can do the job. So we try to be very, very picky. Our training is all about just gaining trust though. It's not about being a pushy you know, person. It's helping people realize that yeah, there's a problem and we can take care of it. So very simply, our reps explain who they are. We explain price right at the very beginning. That helps us to become, you know, come off transparent. We're not trying to hide anything. And then we build value after that. So this is the price. This is what we're going to do. Uh, and then we close. But the close is never, so do you want to buy? It's, are you going to be here tomorrow? You are? Okay, great. Morning or afternoon. And along the way, there's various concerns. Every concern has an answer. Our guys know that if a if a customer has a concern, that means they're interested. What's way worse than a concern is apathy. And so we provide them with very specific answers uh, to those concerns. And it's still, it's still a very tough business. Your average rep will knock on 100 doors. 40 of those people uh, is a decision maker. And two of them will actually buy. So even when you're really good, uh, you better have some... Uh, diligence and courage in order to, you know, be successful. Vess worked his way up from the bottom. He was a top sales rep for us his first year in sales. Uh, the second year, he was our top sales manager, and he just kept continued this traje uh, trajectory. And uh, I still remember <laughs> sitting in his apartment's um, parking lot, talking to him about you know, basically talking him out of law school and saying, I think you need to come join our company and we're, we're going to scale this thing and build an empire. So by the time I was ready to take a step back from the 80, 100 hour weeks, um, you know, Vest was eager to take the reins and, and move forward. How many of you, those that are employed, how many would uh, go to a competitor if they offered you a million dollars? This happened to you, right? Tell us the story. That did happen uh, to me. And we, we have a pretty cutthroat industry and since there's even been offers beyond that. Um, why didn't I do it? Well, number one, I didn't do it because I'm good at math. And I understood that the potential in what we were building and what I was building with Dave um, would be with, you know, far surpass a million dollars. Although when that offer was initially made, I didn't have a million dollars. And so I maybe paused for a brief second. So because Dave had properly given me or had given me a great vision, it was pretty easy uh, to pass up on that. I also just believe that loyalty matters and seeing something through and making your circumstance the right circumstance is a much more powerful way of going about business and going about life as opposed to just chasing the, the next shiny object in front of you. You only have you know, roughly 10 seconds to make an impression on somebody and have them capture what you're doing and decide if they're interested in you or not. Uh, and our, our overall approach only takes about two minutes to explain before you can be signing somebody up. So it's, it's great in, in that sense from a sales perspective that you can quickly go through it, gather whether someone's interested and, and proceed forward u utilizing the technology. I see technology finally starting to get into some of these other areas, which is really exciting. Um, you know, with, with where we're at, I just I continue to see things moving faster and faster. I feel like business is moving faster today in terms of the pace of business than it ever has before because primarily of technology. So I, I think it's just a matter of time before people take pest control a little more seriously in the tech field. And um, I don't know, time will tell. I think 
every company is becoming a tech company long term. It's kind of funny to think that a pest control company has a development team of now 30 people on it. Uh, but as we looked at our industry and as we you know, were trying to scale, we realized we need better ways uh, to do things. Uh, so on the sales side, we've developed you know, several apps. These apps, for example, Street Smarts, tracks every single knock. It tracks every single outcome. It's how we hand out area. Uh, in the old days, and some companies still, to keep track of their knocks, they'd literally put a check mark, you know, with chalk on the on a driveway. Whereas our guys are walking around with, you know, the Street Smart app that gives them uh, the ability to really track how they're doing. From there, you know, it's gone to a customer app. No one in our industry has a customer app that allows our customers to reservice or to schedule reservices, to take care of problem issues, and in a future. Uh, addition of it, they'll actually even be able to see the exact route that our service pros take around the home so that uh, they can have confidence that we're doing a really good job. All of this, I guess, creates natural pressure on, you know, the sales side of the business. So we're not, you know, browbeating them, trying to whip them to work. They have these apps that track their progress and it really, really uh, pushes them. You guys have a 95% retention rate of sales reps that come over from your competitors. Uh, what is your company culture like and how do you keep your employees engaged in an, not my words, somebody else's unsexy industry? Yeah, no, I think, I think um, that's been one of the most fun challenges is trying to make an unsexy industry sexy. When sales reps switch to us, they will sell 60% more with our company on average than they did the previous year with the competitor. We really believe that if you treat your people well, that they're gonna reciprocate back. I think it was Stephen Covey that said, treat your employees the way you would want them to treat your very best customer. As far as training goes, I, I had a really tough experience my first year when I went out to sell 18 years ago. Um, I sold zero for five days straight, knocked a thousand doors, nothing. And I ended up buying about a half dozen sales books. And what I, what I realized, because by the end of the summer, I ended up becoming the top uh, rookie in the company out of a couple hundred reps, I realized that most of the training back then, the focus was predominantly on what the service entailed. It wasn't about how to sell something. It's almost like people are wet rags. They throw them against a the wall and see what sticks. And I just, I went through that misery. And I remember thinking that, this isn't good for the company either. The company could make so much more money if you just trained your people and then they would go recruit more people and you'd have a better experience overall. Training and, and development is just such a part of our, our culture. Uh, that's where you know, the cool kids hang out you know, in the training manual. That, uh, that's how we get an infant in sales to become a giant in sales uh, very, very quickly. So what's the worst pest and hardest to kill? Uh, scorpions are pretty tough. You know, spiders are an arachnid. They're not technically an insect, so they don't have the sphericals and they breathe differently. Um, so it's, it's a little harder to take care of spiders. I think setting expectations correctly is important. Telling somebody that, hey, we'll probably get rid of about 70% of the spiders as opposed to you'll never see one again. Our entomologist actually goes through our resurfaces and looks at, you know, how can we improve in every specific area across the board? You know, what products are we using? Um, as we've expanded nationally, it's been really interesting seeing what different types of pests there are in different states and then adjusting, you know, what we did previously. We've just learned that certain products have a better yield in terms of, you know, getting rid of certain pests. Where do you guys look to, for inspiration and guidance? For me personally, I, I really believe that leaders are readers. I, I read a couple of books every month. I'll tell you, if there's a book about a Navy SEAL, I listen to it or, or read it. I get a lot of inspiration out of just the, the toughness, the grit, the determination, uh, the courage. Frankly, a lot, of, a lot of my inspiration, though, comes from our goals. Our, we set our goals very, very high. Uh, to put in perspective, our nearest competitor, at least from a door-to-door -door standpoint, did maybe roughly 70,000 accounts last year, and we did 230,000 accounts. Last year, we were, to, we were able to give nearly $450,000 back uh, to various organizations. Giving back has become a legacy, you know, part of the legacy of Apton, and what we've learned is that if everyone just does a little bit, you can actually do a lot. What's the future? What are your plans? So we're, we're always, for me, I'm always kind of looking five years out and trying to think, you know, what are we going to be doing? And I just, I love having that vision. Um, 
you know, for, for right now, for this year specifically, we're focusing a lot on our digital marketing platform and at new add-ons to the new customer app. Um, we're going to do a couple hundred million this year uh, or, pro or approach that number, uh, which isn't too bad for fourth year. But I, I think, you know, within, say, another five years, we'll be, you know, over half a billion easily. And, you know, ultimately, we'd really like to, or at least I think, um, you know, have an evaluation of over a billion dollars is maybe be the first you know, uh, Utah pest control unicorn. It'd be pretty fun. Thank you. Thank you.